Hey, welcome to Electra Online, and here is our second video about Maxwell's equations. Before we go into details of each of the equations, let's talk about Maxwell's understanding and concept of the speed of light. So, by studying electromagnetic waves, by studying electric fields and magnetic fields and how they interact with each other, of course, at that time it was known that the strength of an electric field is equal to k times q divided by r squared. And of course, k can be written as 1 over 4 pi epsilon sub naught, where epsilon sub naught is the permittivity of free space for electric fields of 8.85 times 10 to the minus 12 coulomb squared per newton per meter squared. And so what that means is if we have some charge in space, let's say we have q amount of charge, and you want to know what the electric field strength is at a distance r away from that charge, we use this equation right there. So the field strength as caused by the presence of a charge can be calculated using this equation. Likewise, the magnetic field strength, B, is equal to mu sub naught times I divided by 2 pi R. Now, I is the current in a wire. So, if we have a, a wire that has current flowing through the wire, say current is equal to I, and we're a certain distance away from that point, let's say this far away right here, what is the strength of the magnetic field? Not just the direction, just the strength of the magnetic field. Well, if your distance R away from the wire, that has the current like that, you can find the strength of the magnetic field by taking this right here. What is this? This is what we call the permeability of free space for magnetic fields, 4 pi times 10 to the minus 7 Weber's per amps per meters, times the strength of the current divided by 2 pi times the distance from the wire, and that gives you the strength of the B field. So what is mu sub naught and epsilon sub naught? Well, those are properties of free space out there in the universe. The whole universe is filled with space and it controls how fast magnetic fields and electric fields can interact with each other and can interact with charges and currents. There's a finite speed at which things can move through space and interact with each other. And he figured out what's equal to the speed of light. And he found out that if you took those two constants, multiplied them together, took the square root and took the inverse of it that was exactly equal to the speed of light. The speed at which light moves to the universe is determined by these two constants that control. These are constants related to whatever fabric of space does to electric fields and magnetic fields. Whatever it does, those constants that control how electric fields and magnetic fields interact with each other and work in space, those define the speed at which light can move through space or electromagnetic radiation can move through space. And it's really interesting if we throw numbers in there, so we get 1 over the square root of uh, mu sub naught, which is 4 pi times 10 to the minus 7, and if we multiply that times epsilon sub naught, which is 8.85 times 10 to the minus 12, and we then grab a calculator, and we actually work that out. Amazingly enough, so we take, uh, let's see here, we take pi times 4 e to the 7 minus times 8.85 e to the 12 minus, and we then take the square root of that, and we take the inverse of that, one over that, let's see if I write the right button there, there it is. Amazingly enough, it tells us that this is exactly 2, 2.998 times 10 to the hmm, 8 meters per second, which is right around 300,000 kilometers per second or 186,000 miles per second. An amazing discovery by, by Maxwell realizing what those two constants mean that we use all over electricity and magnetism equations. Because those determine how things interact with each other in the universe and also determine the speed at which light can move through space. Pretty amazing. What a discovery.